Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff. We are back in the cellar with Marquis Selections and their managing director, Chris Cripp, in our lovely, lovely cellar at the American Restaurant. Hi, Bonnie. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. All right, big questions. Ongoing discussion. Closures. Yes. Should they be cork, synthetic, screw on? How do we open and close them, and how do we store our wine? Well, uh, this is all about the care of it. This is the care of the wine, okay. and, and it starts really with what the winemaker is doing to care for it for you. Okay. So that's kind of the, the first, of how it gets into the bottle, or the box, for that matter. Okay. And so I thought we would just kind of go through what's been happening in the wine world, because in the last 10 years, it's really changed quite a bit. Uh, rather dramatically, and of course our goal with all of this is to preserve what that winemaker put into this bottle. Absolutely. Okay. They're all trying to be a shepherd to bring it from the vineyard into the winery, from the winery into the bottle, from the bottle to you. To so. me. All right, now, how have we closed these wines and what are the advantages and disadvantages to these different closures? Sure. What I've got for you today, um, I brought three different closures here, mm -hmm. and I've got a couple extras to, to show you to, okay. to kind of pop in as well. Um, but uh, the first is from Australia. This is our Marquis Organic Shiraz Cabernet blend. Yes. It is closed with the Stelvin screw cap. Okay. So it's got the actual screw cap on the top of it, no cork, anything on the inside. Can I tell you something embarrassing? Yep. I tried to open the screw cap with a oh, wine, with opener, wine opener. I wasn't paying attention. Well, <laughs> you, gonna, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> you're gonna see it anymore. And look, the top of the bottle's black. You know. I know. It well, it fooled me, which so. didn't take much. Can we talk about the advantages and disadvantages to screw cap? Sure. Well, the screw cap um, is really a major invention from Australia, New Zealand, that part of the world. Ah, didn't um, know that. They yeah. are the earliest adopters of it um, through throughout what you're gonna find. So if you're looking at those those ranges of wines, mm -hmm. especially in New Zealand, and specifically they started with white wines and now they've moved to red wines. Okay. Okay. Um, but what it gives you is uh, on the inside of the bottle, um, it is sealed with a, a food grade polymer. So if you feel on the inside of that, it's got just a little bit of a kind of a waxy feel to it. Yeah. Just a food grade polymer that makes a seal between that so that the so that the wine is never touching metal. It's actually touching the food grade polymer. And that I think has been one of the concerns is wine touching metal and now we know that doesn't right. happen with so the screw cap. So that's what that's really kind of what they've done with the screw cap. The other couple things that have really happened with the screw cap is one, uh, the first few when you stack them very high mm -hmm. it would cause pressure and then you could break a seal. Wow. You break the seal just like you know you you cracked a Pepsi or Coke, you know, it doesn't retain that freshness. So it, it won't. Why did the screw cap happen? What unhappiness was occurring with the corks that led us to a screw cap? Well, that that goes right back to a little bug called TCA. TCA. Tichloral anisole. Okay. Tichloral anisole is a um, it's a type of fungus that gets on um, gets on a cork okay. or gets into a batch of cork and it creates what we think of as cork taint. So you ever heard someone say a wine is corked? I have. That is because um, when they harvest, uh, when you harvest cork, cork comes from a tree mm -hmm. and they, they plunge out a piece of cork mm -hmm. and it, that batch is then dried and um, they, they cut it out in strips and they, they bring it down into to pieces. Mm -hmm. But when that's dried, it sometimes can pick up this, this bug. A winery can also pick up this bug. The precursor to the cork and bottle was a clay vessel. They figured out the clay vessel right. was not it wasn't going uh, wasn't to retain good. the flavors and the freshness. And so the the inertness of the bottle was was there, and then they used the cork, which they found from the trees, and they okay. felt like that was a pretty good I substitute. See. The winemaker said, "Look, you know, this is my baby. This is what I'm doing. So I want something that I can be a guaranteed that it doesn't have cork taint." and B, know that it's going to hold up over time. So that's kind of why the, the screw cap came about. I've actually been in a restaurant with a friend who is a wine connoisseur, and we have had to return a bottle because it was corked. Well, the, the cork... And of course, the restaurant was wonderful about it, but still, sure. it the, happened. The, the cork numbers really are something where uh, up to you know 10 to 15 percent were... Significant. ...were a, having a taint that would cause a, a change in, in, the, in the taste. So some folks said, you know, I'm not confident enough to, about the cork, so that's how the screw cap was born. Right. But also, so yes. So the, the second 
thing item I'd want to show you here. This is a synthetic cork. Okay, do so you open it the same way you do a regular open cork? Open this the same way. Okay, so, you know, let's see our synthetic cork. Take a look at our synthetic. We've got a couple different ones here. Feels kind of plastic. Does feel a little plasticky. Little? This one here is full plastic. You can see that this one's got a porousness to it. It does. This one is called a Noma cork. It's a okay. little bit different than this one, um, which is all the full plastic. What I find with these, the hardest thing is that they don't go back in the bottles very well. Oops. Um, but so if something they, you know, else. this is a that good example will. of one that will. Uh, the the advantage with the Noma cork, the other synthetic corks, is that you get the romance of opening the bottle, which is have to do. Have it's to really do. A, a fun experience. You know, uh -huh. there's something about it that you just don't. That I don't Screw you away. off the camp just yeah. doesn't, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Know, I, I've talked to some great small A's across the country that, you know, have come up with a great way to throw the neck oh, over the table and course, slowly it's drama. Unscrew. Yeah, but it Theatrics, just, but it it's is. not quite as not. beautiful as no. the, the ceremony of pulling okay. the cork out. Would you be good enough to show us um, how to, the way to open a bottle of wine? Sure. This is our <laughs> Chirpillo. Yes. This is the... 2006 Monastro. Okay, so slowly you are take you first take a knife. Yes. And, okay. And so I'm cutting, this and so the there's two two spots do. that you can cut. You can cut right. either below the rim or above the rim. Is there an advantage to doing one or the other? It really is kind of a personal preference. Okay. Um, it I do it uh, below the rim. Um, if it's a very tight rim at the top, mm -hmm. because what it does, if it's very tight at the top, it, it in, interferes with pouring. Okay, so, and here... And so now you've got a screw that goes mm -hmm. into, and what I try to do is I try to take the screw, mm -hmm. place it right in the middle. So the goal is begin that right in the middle of the core. And this is be it synthetic or be it real. You are doing the same real, thing. Right in the middle, mm -hmm. so that you should be able to spin it roughly five times to get the standard cork pull in. And then you've got a lip that you're gonna wanna to cut the lip, mm -hmm. catch the lip there. Mm -hmm. And you just use it as a fulcrum I to see. slowly pull that cork right out of there. Okay. Towards the end, you we can- We don't wanna leave cork in there. When you pull the cork out, yes. one of the things you also wanna look for is if you, this has got a nice uh, color at the end of it. Yes. But if you see color running up the sides- Oh, uh, not a good thing. That is not a good thing. If you see the color running up the sides, usually that means that the wine has gotten hot. And so the wine has gotten kind of almost cooked in the bottle and moved up the sides of the vat. So okay, so the cork really tells several stories it, about it the wine. It, it can kind of help you. So when when I don't smell the cork, the sommelier gives me a cork. I never smell it. It doesn't it doesn't help you. Mm -hmm, I don't know mm -hmm. where that old wives' tale came from, mm -hmm. but uh, but I do look at it because I want to know whether there are any telltale signs of any. Uh, so that damage. means improper storage is what it means. Yes, it, means yes, it does. Storage. It wasn't stored at the right temperature, out of light. and So what did you just uncork? So that was the Chirpillo. This is a Monastrel. Mm -hmm. um, so from the uh, Bodegas La Parisma mm -hmm. vineyards, mm -hmm. Monastrel is their uh, old vine grape. It's red wine. Mm -hmm. um, this comes from ungrafted vines. So uh, there was a big uh, phylloxera bug that wiped out vineyards back in um, in Europe uh, post-war, mm -hmm. and this was one of the vineyards that made it through. So because it, because did, it didn't ever no have grafting. that bug. So yep, no bug. what we find with it, a nice big nose. We've got a nice big glass to, to swirl it in and get some of that oak particles out of there. Uh, what I find for my Ooh. winemakers is they, you know. Depending on what they're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. what they're trying to do, this wine could go for a nice big steak. Mm, it sure could. But they, they, they look at the closures too, as in where their price points are. So, you know, this is a $15, $15 price point, these are about $25. Mm -hmm. So they went out and bought the reference one, the best corks that they could find for this wine. This is another style of cork. This is a um, called a twin cap cork. Mm -hmm. There are about three different types of corks that are made with real cork. This okay. one has a disc on each end that is that. the high quality and then in the middle is the low quality stuff. Mm. So that's the kind of the okay. lowest end one you can All get. Right. The the medium quality one, there's a another one that's made again with that food grade polymer that's on the mm -hmm. inside of mm -hmm. the seal here, mm -hmm. which um, it's, it allows the whole thing to be an agglomerated cork. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. two or three different mm -hmm. types of corks. So as the cork well, matters. Yeah, the yeah. cork matters as well as um, a growing trend in putting wine into uh, bagging box, which okay. Is, and so people have kind of 
you know, roll their eyes at that. And what do you feel in terms of its ability to retain the integrity of the wine in the bag and the box? I, I think that for a young, fresh wine, okay. specifically, um, you know, something that you know is going to be consumed within a couple weeks, uh, it, it does a great job about keeping the, okay. the oxygen off of it. I think it does a little better. The red wines stand up in it a little better. Oh, really? Um, okay. You know, what I found is that in tests in Australia that, uh, that I follow have found is that the white wines degrade a little bit faster. Faster. Start okay. to oxidate a little bit more. So if you're going to buy a wine in a bag in a box, you might look for a, a red wine that's a little younger and have more confidence about that. Right. Okay. I we've talked about how to open the wine. We've talked about the closures for the wine. Let's talk about closing the wine up and storing it so that we can enjoy this for a few days or so. Sure. Now there's a variety of ways to close. What do you recommend? Well, well I haven't finished the wine. What do I do? So first off, um, you know, we've got this, this wine, if you can look at how much, there's about um, four or five ounces of mm -hmm. air in the bottle. Mm -hmm. And so if you just cork it like this. With the cork that it with the cork that came, came from, with, with. It, mm -hmm. will, um, it will be good for a number of days. Uh, if you go ahead and chill it down, it will last a few days longer. So just, if you don't have any tools, you don't have anything else, you can just go ahead and put your own regular cork in it, chill it down in a refrigerator, um, something like that, to mm -hmm. be able to, to let me go last for a couple more days. Do we want it to be on its side, or can it be upright once it's open? Upright once it's open, it's just too much of a mess to try it on its side. Yeah, because it could drip and do things. Yeah, okay, you, so you know, it's you, okay once it's open. Too. Once it's open, keep it upright. Oh, good. You know, that's... But those bottom shelf spots are <laughs> in the refrigerator, yeah. you know, are made for. Okay, um, now, should we want this to last a little longer, and maybe sure. there's more air in the bottle, so what do you recommend? Well, this is a, a little tool that I use. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, a vacuum pump, mm -hmm. and it comes with um, a number of these small corks here. And okay. And all you need to do to be able to... Because air is the, one of the enemies of wine. Right, so this goes okay, that into any goes. bottle, so it's not, it's not hard to put, press back in. And okay. And then this goes onto the top, and you're pumping the air out. So it gets pump. harder and harder to pull up, and when it's really difficult... Then you know you pumped all the air out. all the air out. This, you know, at this point you can tell that there's a seal because when two... Okay. You feel I a little bit of, a, of, okay. of an open there. But that will allow it to last um, slightly longer because all you've done is you've taken that oxygen out of there. Um, there's not a lot of surface area. If you have a big bottle, you open up a big bottle, you really want to try to do something like this, like a Magnum or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you don't consume it all because there's twice as much surface sure. area for it to be able to, to work. If you're moving the bottles around a lot, you know, that's that also increases more surface area. just going to make it go go dead faster. Okay, let's, let's talk about that because you said that movement, vibration, light, heat. let's talk about the ideal way to store wine first before you open it and second, once you've opened it. So before you open it, what is the ideal setting for our bottle of wine? Well, I think here we, we have go. to start right, right here. behind us. We look at all of these bottles are first number one on their side. On their side. Are, are we wanting to keep the cork moist with the wine? Is that what we want? Yes. Okay. You know that it is less of an issue with your screw cap wines mm -hmm. or your synthetics, but specifically with any of the real natural cork products, you want to keep it on its side so that it keeps moist. Okay. Um, you're wanting to stay away from vibration. Um, anything and that's like by a closet door that would slam shut mm -hmm. or... Where um, children are playing and jumping around and... Yeah, okay. anything, that, anything that's going to give it that shake, all you're going to do, they it just, it um, causes quicker degrad degradation, degradation of the wine. Okay, so, all right. So, um, on its side, away from movement. Light is and the other one that we talked numb. about. You know, the, mm -hmm. this is a glass that's tempered so that it, it's not pulling in any, mm -hmm. any regular light, but they want to be able to display it nicely. Well, so, of course. Um, but you find the same glass on uh, wine cooler refrigerators for your home mm -hmm. so that it allows the light in. You can see, but it's got, uh, it takes some of the UV out of it. Okay. Um, but if you walk by a place, see that bottle that's in 
the top of the window, mm -hmm. standing upright. It's been sitting there for six months. Don't drink that wine. Don't, <laughs> don't, that don't wine. drink that wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we won't, you know, we won't do that. And then, okay, so that's the way to store. We've learned. Did I tell you the story of Malcolm Forbes? Mm -hmm. Malcolm Forbes bought oh, one of the most it? expensive bottles of wine in the world. Oh, dear. And he put it on display. Oh, he put it on display in a glass case, oh, no. standing up. Yeah. And over the course of time, that bottle, Cork just one day they were coming by taking videos of it. It's one of supposed to be one of the specific Thomas Jefferson bottles. Oh my goodness. That's another story whether it really was or not. But it's supposed to. Yes, yeah, okay. supposed to. Yeah. They found that it just fell right in the oh, and <laughs> so much for the wine. Yeah, so Okay, well we won't do that. Thank you for inviting us into your cellar again and for taking all the care you take to bring us these award-winning wines. How can we learn more about your portfolio? Well, sure. Well, you can find our great stuff like our new organic wine from, our, from Australia mm -hmm. um, in uh, our website, www.marquee.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, our Facebook page, YouTube, Twitter, all linked in there. So we'd love to have you uh, follow us and see all the great deals we got going on. And visit us. Okay, I think when we come back to your cellar, we should talk about, I mean, Valentine's Day is coming up, pairing wine for occasions of love. And I think we should also talk about what glass our wine should go into. Right. So let's do that next time we're in the cellar. We've got some good ideas for you. Okay. Thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> to your health. Cheers. Cheers.